Okay, moving boundaries of virtual cell. Again, this is uh, uh, work that was performed over a number of years by quite a few people. And I, I wanna start with acknowledgements in case I, I forgot that time, I'm definitely a lot of people involved. It's a very nice work. Um, especially uh, uh, Boris and uh, Sachenko, who's in this meeting now. He's, and Igor Novak, uh, who's a postdoc and faculty member at, at Sense in Time to Industry. Um, also, uh, Masood McCain, uh, who also was uh, worked you know, quite a bit on this project. And both the cell kinematics that I'm going to be talking, and then uh, again with the cell mechanics in close collaboration with Boris. There's a lot of fun working with this. I, I was, I was a student, a very uh, enthusiastic student you know, of um, of these people. I was uh, very, very excited. Uh, Gerard Weatherby is the the software engineer who implemented this uh, kinematics uh, with some help from Faye Gao and Diana Rosasco. Um, it was a numerical uh, analyst that has been working since very, very early since day one uh, with virtual soft to keep our numerical methods uh, sound and performing. Um, so this, so the what you see on the right is uh, is one one figure from the paper where where it uh, we're looking at having a um, a a base grid which is a Cartesian grid, but uh, Sort of an embedded boundary within that, um, and the advantage, and and we had we had a um, a strong desire to keep a to keep detailed mass conservation. Uh, we've most of our spatial discretization or all of it has been using finite volume method, which is which maintains detailed uh, mass conservation. We wanted to. Um, to also have that when we used our moving boundary code, uh, there's, you know, you if if you're able to do that, you you definitely you can usually get a little bit of stability, and you will have less unphysical results while you're um, uh, than if you as you work on your convergence and and the order of convergence and and the different error terms, you can get more and more accurate. But um, you're unlikely to get negative concentrations and things like this in a spurious way, just due to round off. Right? It has to come from somewhere. Um, so this is just just a, a view of this, but um, it was the the basic method used a a separate front tracking code called Frontier that um, that kept track of uh, either. Uh, a, a two-dimensional surface in a three-dimensional domain or uh, a contour in a two-dimensional domain that represents a surface. And we the, the trick was to reconcile that with our background grid and, uh, and maintain accuracy and stability uh, and, and have it be performant. So another way of doing this is to completely remesh an unstructured grid at every time point or or almost every time point, that's very expensive. So we were trying to really uh, keep the, um, uh, keep the expensive operations to a minimum and have them local to, uh, to the surface. And, uh, and anyway, you can, you can look at that paper if you'd like some more details. Um, the, the work had been continuing and uh, uh, Masood and, and and Boris uh, would collaborate with Alex McGillner and others, and we're doing some very nice work in cell mechanics. That was going going to be the next step, uh, right? That still is in uh, is in MATLAB. It's not in virtual cell, but there was some very interesting work done. So um, the original goal was to really bring cell motility modeling uh, in into virtual cell to really make it accessible to um to the rest of us right it, it's it can be very very technical to do this kind of modeling um there were kind of three steps one the first is the cell uh kinematics can we move surfaces around correctly and get proper solutions to the 
to the transport of molecules and to the reactions and fluxes and boundary conditions and do it all correctly, properly, efficiently, um, and with good convergence. So that that's the, the part that we're presenting today. Um, modeling mechanochemical processes of moving cells, that's something we had plans to do when there were some MATLAB prototypes, but we haven't brought into virtual cell. Um, and then in addition to that, really syncing that up with live cell imaging uh, and even uh, segmentation registration, uh, cells sometimes move and maybe you're not interested in the movement, but if you're trying to uh, compare a simulation with a cell that moves slightly, that could be, uh, it could help if you can register those. So here's the the sort of inverse kinematics. This was a a dream, a project that we haven't yet done, but uh, it's, it's not terribly difficult to do, um, which is to uh, using imaging software to back out uh, maybe the motion of contours and then interpolate to get the motion of the bulk fields and bring those in as empirical data that you would then subject a virtual cell to, right? So that its motion would be prescribed from experimental data directly or rather than from the model. And then uh, all the other chemistry and, and behavior would be part of the, that would be drawn from the model and the reactions and everything else. Um, uh, what we did do, uh, so we haven't done that part yet, but what we did do is we have a kinetic model where in the model, we explicitly dictate what the motions are, what the, uh, the, the membrane um, motion and the volume motion as, as vector fields. Uh, and, and they interact with the biochemistry and the biochemistry can, the, the, the kinetic model can also be influenced by the biochemistry. Um, what we don't have is, uh, is the mechanics and where the computer velocity is, is really strongly related to the biochemistry and, and you have constitutive laws of material properties and flows and phases and things like that. Um, so this, if we look, you know, virtual cell has a mathematical description, see how I put it on time, has a math description and a biological description. So our math language, this is just a, a simple kinematic model. It might actually be easier to look at it this way. Um, here we have a, uh, a, a PD equation for U, uh, which is just a, you know, a scalar concentration that's inside a domain. And here we have additional terms, which are velocity X, velocity Y. So th this is advection. So it's reaction, diffusion, advection. You know, this is also diffusion. There's initial concentration. In this case, the rate, so the, you know, the reaction rate inside this domain is zero, but it's still subject to diffusion and an applied velocity field, right? And if you notice down in uh, on line 48, in the next block, we have a membrane subdomain. So the first one was in the volume. Here we're, we're looking at uh, the motion, not of a molecule that's in a field, but we're looking at the motion of the membrane itself. So we have a membrane subdomain between the two volumetric components, background and center. That was just what they were called. And we see velocity x and velocity y, the two components of a of a, a vector field, um, and the membrane is evolved in the direction of that vector field. Um, and then, if there were, um, yeah, I think so. That that's the extent uh, that we have for that. One thing I should note is that we do not yet have a. Uh, the ability of having membrane variables. So within this deforming surface, uh, say for the plasma membrane, we do not allow having things like receptors and things like that. Yeah, that, that was not yet implemented. But there's quite a bit that can be done without that. Um, and this is just uh, just a, a screenshot in case um, as kind of a backup. But I'm I'm going to go to uh, to explore the UI a little bit. Um, but this was this was a uh, again, this is prescribed kinematics. This it was it was made to look somewhat like a motile cell, but this was uh, kind of open loop, right? Um, 
to, and just some things to uh, to call out here. We have spatial objects and we have spatial processes. So, so these are new. If you notice under the geometry tab, on the third sub tab is kinematics. So here we're not talking about the chemistry. We're talking about the the domains themselves. So the spatial objects are volumetric objects, like say the cytoplasm or the extracellular domain. Um, and you have surfaces, uh, surface objects, right? So the surface between these, these two components. And they have properties, like the volumes have centroids, velocities, and size. Size is scalar, centroid and velocity are vectors. Um, surfaces have normals. So if, if for all of these attributes, they, they are now quantities that you can use in your model, right? You have uh, nor, vec, normal uh, vectors defined at every point, uh, and there's an X, Y, and Z component. Uh, uh, actually, X and Y, because this is a, a 2D code right now. Uh, velocity, same thing. Distance is a, like a distance map, like you would get in level set method. So you can, it's a signed distance map. So that can be helpful uh, for, for sometimes if you have, say, um, migration of vesicles to the membrane, you know where the membrane is locally. Right? Um, direction, I think, is the unit vector in the direction of some object, say, like a point source. So the, the third type of spatial object, which is new to virtual cell, is a point. And you can have that. You can move it around. You can, know, you can ask where the direction to it is. You could try to do some chemotaxis toward it. It's a little bit contrived, but um, but it's kind of nice. Now, spatial processes, really, we have we have two things. For membranes, we have um, we have the membrane kinetics itself, the subject to a vo to a velocity field, uh, um, and uh, within uh, volumetric spaces, we can also have a velocity field that is applied as sort of a an additional advection term. So if you, it, you know, the, it, it specifies for every point in the volume what its velocity is. And if in your model, you're specifying an additional advection term that they would be summed. It would be with respect to that moving frame of reference, right? Um, okay, let me just, no time left, I guess, but I'll just, Kind of show you that it is indeed real. Um, and we can look at some of the, oops, don't look at this. Uh, let's see, normal axis is either not found in your mind. So it's a display issue or something. All right, I won't, I won't, <laughs> I think I won't uh, push too many buttons over there. Um, yeah, but if we look at the uh, the descriptions of the kinematics, mm -hmm. right? We have we have the surface quantities. There's membrane kinematics, uh, and then you have the uh, the velocities um, associated with the volumes. What it is. Surprise, I don't see this. Oh no, surface normal, surface velocity. Um, if we if we look at the generated math, we should see that there is a velocity vector uh, assigned to the membrane subdomain. And we'll notice that there are velocity components for a and B as well, which are applied to the PDEs. If we go to the velocity of, say, B in the X direction and the velocity of A in the X direction, they're both one and Y is zero, right? Because we, we saw it move to the positive X direction. And if we look at the membrane, I would imagine that this would evaluate to one as well. And this is evaluate to zero, let's say. See how that goes. Well, that's progress. Find it somewhere. Oh, 
capable of arresting. Where's X proxy? Anyway, okay. um, I think I'm out of time. I was I was really only, this is kind of a flyby. Um, if you're, oh, here it is. Okay, so um, here it's a little more interesting because it, the velocity of the membrane is a function of A, which is one of the uh, fields. So here the membrane is actually moving as a consequence of the biochemistry. Um, but it again, it's sort of uh, phenomenological. It's the, there's no mechanics involved. But you can, I, there was another uh, simulation I had where um, it was sort of like the macrophage chasing the bacteria. Um, if you move the bacteria, if it knows about the direction to it, it can, uh, it can follow, follow that. Um, so, okay. I get, I'm out of time, any questions? There's a question in the chat about what do you think about kinematics and SPML spatial, but you might want to reply in the chat as well, because I think the yeah. answer might be long and uh, Aaron is already taken out uh, five minutes or so. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll, I'll respond on the chat, in the chat. Thank you. <laughs>